Coming up on KDLT News Today, after nearly two hours of debate, a bill that would raise the state sales tax to boost teacher pay fails in the House by just one vote. Then a Sioux Falls teen faces felony charges after police find three explosive devices in his bedroom, and a Sioux Falls flight bound for Chicago makes an emergency landing due to smoke in the cabin. You're watching KDLT News Today on NBC. Good morning and welcome to the second hour of KDLT News Today. I'm Kevin Hurd. After two hours of debate yesterday, a bill to boost the state sales tax to raise teacher pay failed in the South Dakota House by just one vote. Representative Lee Schoenbeck said the debate would rest on the shoulders of one person, and it did. The final vote was 46 to 23, with 47 votes needed to pass. The chamber was well over capacity. Many representatives voiced their opinions. After, after the results were displayed, Schoenbeck called for a reconsideration, and it was granted. House Minority Leader Spencer Howley was frustrated with the result. I was hoping that we could get this passed in one vote, uh, but again, we're going to reconsider, so there will be a few people. There's two or three swing boats out there that I'm hoping that they can pick up, uh, so it isn't lost yet. Now, with the expectation of a close vote, Majority Whip Don Hager was pleased to see the bill defeated. He believes better options have been presented. Now we can go look for the more fiscally responsible thing to do, and that's funding this program, these reforms. And there are good reforms out there, but we want to fund that within our means. The vote for reconsideration will take place today. Representative Hager expects that to pass. A revote on the bill could then happen right after that or on Monday. Well, Mid Central Educational Cooperative is suing the estate of Scott Westerhouse. He's the man accused of killing his wife and kids in Platt last year before killing himself. His former employer filed the $2 million lawsuit this month. They say there's reasonable probability Westerhouse misused co-op money. A company hired to do an audit back in December found only minor discrepancies with expenses. Investigators say Westerhouse killed his family hours after learning he lost a $4.3 million gear up contract. A Sioux Falls teen faces felony charges after police found three explosives in his bedroom. Police took several items from the home, including a glass jar with fireworks material, BBs, and a fuse. Officers also found a book about building explosives. His mom actually called police after she was concerned her son had explosives. The boy was arrested on three counts of possession of an improvised explosive device. A Sioux Falls flight bound for Chicago makes an emergency landing due to smoke in the cabin. Passengers on American Airlines Flight 3047 say they started yelling after smelling smoke and noticing the floor was hot. The emergency landing was announced 20 minutes into the flight. The plane made a bumpy landing in Waterloo, Iowa. Passengers were able, though, to get on a replacement plane. The third annual In Her Shoes Breakfast kicks off this morning at the Sioux Falls Convention Center. It brings together hundreds of women from across the region. They'll talk about empowering other women in their lives. KDLT Sarah Blakely is live at the convention center this morning with more. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Kevin. Yep, we're back here at the convention center where the third annual In Her Shoes Women's Empowerment Breakfast takes place. There's going to be over 600 people here, women and men. Men, don't count yourselves out. You guys are important, too. And they're just going to be talking about how they can encourage, inspire, and empower one another. And this is actually going to be like the red carpet area, you know, where like the models and celebrities get their pictures taken. And I was actually taught the proper way how to do this. Ashley Thompson from MB, she told me it's called the step repeat. So we're going to practice this. So you strike pose like this and then you take another step and you repeat and then all the photographers and the paparazzi are just taking pictures that's what I hear at least anyway we're going to be back here in just a few minutes talking with one of the speakers who is going to be speaking at this event there's three different people talking about how to empower women and how to get them to keep doing the good things that they're doing in the community for now Kevin I'll send it back to you all right Sarah Blakely with the step and repeat she's gotten pretty good at that we'll check back in with her a little bit later on in the show Meanwhile, a combine took out traffic lights on the east side of Sioux Falls yesterday morning. The farm equipment was on a trailer and too tall to clear the lights. It actually brought down two sets of lights at the corner of Arrowhead and Veterans Parkway. The driver didn't feel or notice the impact, so he kept on going. Police finally caught up with him on Highway 11. Now, since the driver was unaware, it's doubtful he will face charges. The lights are back up and running. Whoops. Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. Whoops is pretty much all you can say about that, right? Whoops, Daisy. I mean, those are pretty big farm vehicles, though, too. I can imagine not feeling the impact, especially yeah. when they're rope lights, too. 
Yeah, good thing no, you know, no one was hurt, no damage yeah, that's other than best part. those lights. This, we might see some signs and lights coming down, but it's not going to be because of a truck. Uh, I'm worried about your sky cam this morning. I know, me too. Yeah. Do we have extra bolts, do you think, for that thing? I think we've got some extra hardware. Now, trying to find someone who's brave enough to climb that high, that's a whole different story. Here's a live look on the Aerostay Hotel sky cam. Bouncing around more than I think I've ever seen it. Wind speeds currently... Okay, this is an average wind. Look at Mitchell. Lately, they've been, last couple of minutes, they've been averaging 54 miles per hour. So it is really windy this morning. Trash cans and recycling bins are going to be flying. And if this is true, this is the highest wind gust I've seen today. This is the station at the Mitchell Airport. This is the first time I've seen it. 76 miles per hour for a wind gust. Whew! That just took my breath away. 40s and 50 mile per hour winds. For much of eastern South Dakota, high wind warnings, though, for those in the yellow. All these counties, kind of a little hook of yellow counties that stretch into northeastern Nebraska, northwest Iowa. Wind advisories, in effect, for those in the tan. Pretty warm start to the day today. You don't know it, but warm air is pretty commonly found well above our heads overnight in the atmosphere. And that warm air is starting to get mixed down to the surface. So temperatures remain mild, 30s and 40s. We are seeing some rainfall. Some heavier pockets have developed uh, within the last couple of minutes. Northeast of Watertown, one, and northwest of Falkton for another one. So some pockets of some heavier rainfall. The future cast shows the timing of this in the Twin Cities really by lunchtime. By that time, many of us seen sunny skies. It will still be breezy, though. Tomorrow will be the one where you might contemplate eating outside for lunch because we'll see 50s, sunny skies, and light winds today. The breeze will take over, but sunshine will break back out. A lot of folks missing the vitamin D, and you'll get some today. 60 Chamberlain, 62 in winter. Off towards the northeast, a few more clouds for a little bit longer. We'll have temps in the mid to upper 40s for highs. Looking at your seven-day forecast, after the wind advisory today, we'll uh, pretty much cut the wind completely off. Saturday, nice and light, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Low 50s, a little bit cooler for Sunday. Notice in the seven-day forecast, no chances of precipitation after this morning. Looks like a very quiet pattern. Most of the systems being deflected out of our backyards. And that's going to lead to sunshine, especially for the start of next week. We will see temps drop a little bit, though, eventually as we go deeper and deeper into next week. By Thursday, looks like highs will be in the mid-30s. Kevin? All right, Brian, thanks very much. Well, as Governor Dugard prepares to make his decision on House Bill 1008, Many are hoping to reach out to him, asking him not to sign what's called the bathroom bill. Thomas Lewis, a high school student, has become a transgender activist as of late. KDLT's Andrea Anderson met with him to talk about his attempts to reach Governor Dugard. We're all human beings, transgender, gay, whatever. We're all human, and we all deserve the same human kindness, same human respect, and that includes being allowed to use the bathroom. Thomas Lewis didn't intend to be an advocate or the voice of the transgender community, but he said things have gotten to a point where he had no choice but to speak out. The bill has passed the Senate and now it's on Governor Dugard's desk. I thought we needed a trans person to speak up and say, you know, this is actually affecting people. He's using the online petition site change.org to make his voice heard in an emotional plea to the governor. Being a kid is hard enough. We don't need lawmakers to make it even harder. South Dakota lawmakers are sending a message that it's okay to segregate, humiliate, and bully transgender students like me. Lewis says the bill alienates transgender students by singling them out. You're going into a separate bathroom by yourself that makes you an easier target for bullying, harassment. And that's nothing that, you know, a high school student who's already going through enough of growing up grades, stuff like that, they don't need that in their lives. With nearly 1,500 supporters, Lewis hopes his petition will show Governor Dugard that HB 1008 is not what's best for students. You should let people who want to use the bathroom use the bathroom. It's, you know, a basic body function of the human body. So there shouldn't be an issue here at all. Lewis says he plans to travel with members from the Center of Equality to Pierre on Tuesday. They'll meet the governor face to face, and that's the final day Dugard can either sign or veto the bill. Taking a look at stories making national headlines this morning, a 16-year-old boy is in critical condition after a helicopter's crash landing in the waters off Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. You just saw it there. Good Samaritans who saw the crash helped rescue the five people on board. 
First responders brought the pilot and passengers to the hospital. No word yet on what caused the crash landing. The Navy said the helicopter is owned by a company that gives helicopter tours of Oahu. The FAA is expected to investigate. Meanwhile, the FBI searched a California home connected to the brother of San Bernardino shooter Syed Farouk. The house has been searched before, but federal agents were seen carrying out a box of things and a computer. They also searched two cars parked out front. Officials would not discuss the nature of the search. And a crowd cheered in Mobile, Alabama as the passenger train arrived for the first time since Hurricane Katrina damaged the tracks back in 2005. Amtrak operated the train as a test for resuming service through the Gulf Coast. After more than 10 years, the train is a symbol of hope and rebirth as the region still recovers. The train carried passengers from Jacksonville, Florida to New Orleans. It made 14 stops along the way. Amtrak hasn't announced plans to restart regular service, though, in the area. And that's a look at your national headlines this morning. Here's a look now at your ag markets. Today's ag markets are brought to you by Kurtz Cycle Center.